Let's talk a little bit about speed and velocity. You should know already that speed would be a scalar quantity, whereas velocity would be a vector quantity, meaning velocity has to include information about a direction, whereas speed does not. So let's start with speed. Speed is maybe the more intuitive, the one you're more used to. And we know speed has to do with motion. But what exactly is it? And you're probably going to say, well, it, it's, it's speed. It's how fast something is. But we need to be able to define it in terms of other things. So what defines speed? And you could say, well, if I go a certain distance and it takes me a long time, then I have a low speed. And if I go the same distance in a short time, then I have a high speed. So it's some comparison between distance and time. So if you take a certain distance and you divide it by the amount of time you took to go that distance, that's what gives you your speed. A couple things to point out here. First of all, we're representing speed still with the V or the Greek letter nu, but it has no arrow over top because it's not a vector. Distance divided by time. How does that make sense with what I just said? Well, if it takes you a long time, then you're dividing distance by a big number and you're going to get a slow speed and vice versa. So we can see that this formula intuitively makes sense. Another thing to note is units. Distance is in units of meters and time is in units of seconds. Those are our SI units. So our units for velocity are going to be meters per second, which makes sense. Sorry, I said velocity, I should have said speed. Our units for speed are meters per second. And that's a helpful tip, by the way. If you ever forget a formula, or you don't have a formula sheet handy, what you might do is think of the units. If you know that speed or velocity is measured in meters per second, well, meters is a distance, and seconds is a time, so you need distance per time. Let's think for a moment about the pendulum of a clock. So here I'm going to draw a pendulum that's swung up at a pretty high angle, probably higher than most clocks would ever go. Here I'm also going to draw the equilibrium position where the pendulum would be when it was at rest, if you eventually let it go to rest. And we know the pendulum oscillates and it goes to the other side and it swings back and forth, back and forth. Now, this pendulum has some average speed to it. So now I'm thinking about average speed. Right? We know all the way at the top of its motion, it's technically stopped, it has no speed. But at the bottom of the motion, it's going quite fast, and it oscillates in between. So halfway in between there, we could say it has a medium speed. But there's some average speed that it's going if we would average all those speeds out. Okay, so just keep that in mind for a minute, and let's think now about velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity. It's the vector equivalent of speed. So instead of just a v, it's going to also have an arrow over top, indicating this has a direction. And how are we going to define velocity? Well, we're going to use the vector equivalence of our speed formula. So instead of distance, we're going to have displacement divided by time. Now, time, by the way, doesn't need a vector, uh, doesn't need a direction because time always goes forward. And so our units for velocity are still going to be in meters per second, but there's also, of course, going to be a direction included. And that direction is just going to be the same direction that the displacement was in. So if the displacement was up, that means the velocity is also up. So the velocity kind of inherits that part of the displacement. 